hate group. The I-team's Vanessa Murphy made a visit to find out why and discover the church members disagree. Vanessa. Denise, this group's philosophy is if you're not part of certain races, you will eventually be their slave. But leaders say they are not a hate group because they claim they don't hurt anyone. Preaching on the streets. Spreading their message worldwide. We love our people. That's why we come up here every week. And now setting up a church and school in Las Vegas. We're not fooled by the American philosophy that we love everybody. No. We understand who our enemies are through the Bible. That's the wisdom that we have through the Bible. And the enemies are... The enemies are the other nations. That's who the enemy is. That's anyone who's not part of the 12 tribes referred to in the Old Testament, according to this local leader. Christ was a so-called black man that looks like us. Yes, we Gabar ben Israel, known as Officer Gabar at Israel United in Christ, or IUIC, says only certain races are welcome to worship here. So-called black people, uh, Caribbeans, uh, our people are scattered throughout the world, so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians. Those are the, the 12 tribes of Israel. As for other races? The other nations are going to be our slaves in the future. So I will be your slave? Yes, according to the Bible. Although I'm not part of the 12 tribes, I was welcome here for this report. IUIC officially opened a location on Sahara blocks from the Strip in May. This country is not here to help us. It's not here to, to lift us up. It's here to destroy us. That's what's being preached in Southern Nevada neighborhoods. Officer Gabar, who lives here, says he's been a member of IUIC for three years after leaving a Christian church, and more than 30 people have joined him here. I was in church 40 years not knowing who I was. I still thought I was black. Black is a color in the crayon box. But we are the Israelites. According to the Bible. Bible. And for many questions during this interview, 17, Officer Gabar, 14, replied with a verse Psalms 28 and 7, Leviticus 19 17. Give me Deuteronomy 4. And I ask for an explanation. But what does that mean? That means that the all the other nations that uh, came up against us, they put us, sold us into slavery that are oppressing us, they're going to be slaves in the kingdom. And we're going to be the ruling people in the kingdom under Christ. How does that not divide people right now? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, the Most High God was never about bringing everybody together. He was always about separation. The Southern Poverty Law Center, which dubs itself as an anti-hate not-for-profit, identifies IUIC as a black separatist hate group, typically wanting separate institutions, opposing integration, and anti-white and anti-Semitic. They're not the real Jews. We are the real Jews. Still, Officer Gabar insists IUIC is no hate group and violence is never incited. We're pushing love of our people by keeping God's commandments in the faith of Christ. That way we can build a nation. That way when I see my brother in the street, I don't see I see Christ. Don't think of yourselves only. But at a service here, Don't he says security is ready to keep out anyone who See, doesn't belong. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Who is the brokenhearted? Our people. Here are some rules according to Officer Gabar. IUIC pushes two parent homes, only marriage between a man and a woman, and no sex before marriage. If that happens, a member is kicked out. He calls that Fordham. No smoking cigarettes, no alcohol to get drunk or illegal drug use, no soup kitchens offered. It's up to an individual to help themselves and no interracial relationships. Denise. So, Vanessa, considering your feelings about America or any kind of patriotism, do any of them believe in voting? Officer Gabar says they are not encouraged to vote. Really? Interesting. All right, Vanessa, thanks. <laughs>
Um, Bishop Nathaniel, um, he started actually out in his basement in his house in New York. And from there, he got more members. They, they got a school. It was a very small school. And eventually, the gospel kept spreading. More people kept joining. And now they have a new school in New York, which is Orion Branch. Um, and this gospel is going throughout the whole globe. It's not just the United States. They just came back from Ghana, Africa, to spread the gospel. So we have churches in throughout the United States, Caribbean, uh, and overseas in the UK as well. Do you know uh, about how many and uh, how many people belong to the church? Thousands. Thousands. We, we can't keep track anymore. And as far as location, where you have an actual base? Yes. The base is in Mount Vernon, New York. That's where our headquarters is based out of. And then hit places like this, though, would you say there are 10 or 20? Oh, we're up to, I think, 33 now. 15, between 15 and 30 now. Why do you think this is drawing people in? Uh, that's a good question. I think it's brought in because our people are destroyed. They're lost. And they're looking for, number one, their identity, who they really are. And many of us, you know, we were in a Christian church, uh, Islam, other religions, and it's not agreeing with our spirit because, you know, we've been told that the Bible is for everybody, but to realize that this Bible is talking about our people and the reason why we're in the conditions that we're in. So, and the solutions, we've tried politics, that doesn't work. We've tried religion, that doesn't work. The one thing we have not tried is keeping God's commandments. And that's what is drawing us to this. Again, Christ is calling us back to the knowledge of his truth. When you say our people, mm -hmm. who are you referring to? Um, So-called black people, um, Caribbeans, uh, our people are scattered throughout the world. So-called Hispanics and Native American Indians. Those are the, the 12 tribes of Israel. We have, uh, again, Deuteronomy 28 tells us our history and Deuteronomy 28 and 68 and when I read this, this hit me like a ton of bricks, uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, Egypt means slavery or bondage, with ships, slave ships and it says by the where whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again the it we won't see more anymore again was Jerusalem, which is our homeland it says, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men, slave men, and bond women. Slave women, and no man shall buy you or save you. So no one has been able to save us. Barlow's Dean tribe, Malcolm X tribe, Marcus Darby tribe. The only one that can save us is Jesus Christ. That's the only one through these commandments. Yeah, so what happens from here with the 12 tribes? Oh, uh, as we keep God's commandments, we spread the gospel throughout the, all the whole globe. And then when the one third of our people are sealed through the commandments, that's when Christ will return and redeem us and save us. What happens to the groups that are not part of the 12 tribes? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Isaiah 14 and verse one. It says, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers, who we talk about the other other people, shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, who captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Again, this is about the truth. It's not a hate campaign. Uh, a lot of people think we're a, a militia group or hate no, dogs. It's about the truth of the Bible. But what, okay, so you're reading directly from the Bible. Yes. But what does that mean? That means that the all the other nations that uh, came up against us, they're put us sold us into slavery that are oppressing us. They're going to be slaves in the kingdom, and we're going to be the ruling people in the kingdom under Christ. How does that not divide people right now? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, the Most High God was never about bringing everybody together. He was always about separation. Uh, Deuteronomy 32 and verse 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, to the God separated the sons of Adam. Uh, America is all about bringing everybody together. That's against what God says. 
He wants us separate from everybody. And so he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So by us as Israelites trying to be included into American society, it has destroyed us. So when you look at the groups that are not part of the 12 tribes, mm -hmm. are you resentful? No, not at all. Uh, I'm, I'm dealing with our people, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who are in other religions. We love them. That's why we go out and teach them to bring them out of those things that's destroying them. But we, we love those our people. Even though they're in, in the other doctrines, we love them and it's our prayer that they come out of them and come into the truth. So you believe that groups should just stay with their own groups? Yes, that's according to the Bible. You, you seem to be struggling with that. Again, how can that not divide people and create resentment in our community now? Sure. Um, Deuteronomy 7 and verse uh, I'm going to start at verse 2. It says, And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them, and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. He's talking about the other nations, right? Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. That's separation. We're not supposed to marry the other nations. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou give unto thy son. Again, America's philosophy is totally against the Bible. And we are about coming out of those philosophies and coming into the commandments under Christ. That's our mission, is to bring our people out of the philosophies of America, the doctrines of America. For example, America says that two men can be married, two women can be married. That's against the Bible. America says that everybody come together in one, under one nation. That's against the Bible. By us coming into America and agreeing with the philosophy of America it has destroyed our people. For example, education system. What do they teach our people about us in history? What do you think? I'm going to let you take it. Okay. They teach us slavery, that we were in slavery, and Martin Luther King. They don't teach us who we are, that we are the Israelites in the Bible. They don't, definitely don't teach us that. So now our generations are walk, waking, walking around not knowing who they are, nor have any direction because they don't have any knowledge of the history which is in the Bible. This Bible tells us everything about our people. But do they teach that in the education system? No. Do they teach that in churches? No. I was in church 40 years not knowing who I was. I still thought I was black. Black is a color in the crayon box. But we are the Israelites, according to the Bible. Now we understand that who we are. So now it's our job to go teach our people. How are women here? Uh, women are a very important part of our organization. Um, there's this misconception that women are important. Without women, we can't have a nation. But uh, we teach our sisters how to be in order, according to the scriptures. I'm going to give Titus, second chapter. And the, I'm going to start at first verse. He says, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. That means they're keeping God's commandments. Not false accusers, not giving too much wine, teachers of good things. Without the women, who's going to teach the children? Uh, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. How many of our, our women don't know how to love their husbands? Our women are taught to hate the so-called black man, black and Hispanic man. That's what they're taught in society. The Bible says different, that the women should honor their husband. The husbands should honor their wives. That's what we teach. Uh, another thing, too, we push families and marriages. One husband, one wife. Uh, Hebrews 13, verse 4. And this is one of the main ills in our community. Our women go out and they whore themselves 
rather than understanding that they're, they're special, that they should not just give themselves up to any man, but to a, a righteous man that's keeping God's commandments. But we push marriages, not girlfriend, boyfriend, jump off, slide offs, one night stands. We don't teach that. That's order. Hebrews 13 and 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed under foul. For homeowners and adulterers, God will judge. Just imagine if you took, let's say, 1% of our community that stopped being homeowners and start marrying each other according to the scriptures. Do you realize that single parent families will reduce? Most of the men that are in prison today are in prison because they have to have a father in the house. We push marriages. We have a man, a father, and a mother to teach the children. But our men are growing up without fathers, so therefore, how do they act? They act like their mother. They're very emotional. They don't know how what it means to be a man, but we teach that out of the Bible. The Bible gives us instructions and all the solutions that we need to heal our nation. Do you, uh, are you familiar with the Southern Poverty Law Center? Yes, we are. And yes. you're familiar with what they identify? They call you guys a hate group. Of course. What is your response to that? Okay, that's a, that's a good question. Hold on a minute. Let me get this scripture. We teach love about people, not hate at all. You don't see us out of the teach, uh, in its streets teaching uh, to go and hate other people to go and, and destroy other people, to go lynch other people. We never push that. We're talking about loving amongst our own people, which is a major issue. Leviticus 19, verse 17. And you know, it's what's baffling is when we push loving your brother, your, your sister of your own people, it's hate. But it's fine as long as we love everybody else. But we destroy each other. Leviticus 19, 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So according to the Bible, loving your brother and your sister is correcting them. For example, if I see my brother smoking cigarettes, I'm going to correct him. That's love. But American society has told us that that's judging. You can't judge me. Well, the Bible says I can't. I'm not passing judgment. I can't stone you to death, but I can give you the law, correct you according to the law. Verse 18, thou shalt not avenge nor bear, in, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. What's going on in our communities? Gang violence. Why? Because we're not applying this command. We're not loving one another as brothers and sisters. We're hating one another. Here's an example. Oh, your name is Vanessa? Can I call you Vanessa? Sure. Do you realize you can walk in the worst neighborhoods in our community and no one will bother you? Us, we have more to worry than you do. You're safe in our community, not us, because we don't apply this commandment. It's one commandment. So we push love of our people, of our nation. That's what we push. So... You know, to say that we're a hate group, that is not true. We're pushing love of our people by keeping God's commandments in the faith of Christ. That way we can build a nation. That way when I see my brother in the street, I don't see a nigga. I see Christ. But would you help someone who's not part of the 12 tribes the same way you would help someone who is, for example, someone hit by a car mm -hmm. and they're white? Mm -hmm. Would you help them the same way you help someone who's part of the 12 tribes? That's humanity. That's common sense. Um, we're, we're not saying, and, and, and besides that, according to the law, if you don't help somebody that's in an accident and, and you keep you walk by or drive by, you can be held liable for that. So that's common sense. That's, that's basic decency. Uh, but when we're talking about helping one another, even with our own people, if they're not keeping God's commandments, we don't help them. You have to be keeping God's commandments. Because the Bible says, again, Sirach, 12th chapter, so you don't see us doing soup kitchens. We don't do that. Sirach 12 and verse 
2. It says, Do good to the godly man, and thou shalt find a recompense, and if not from him, yet from the most high. Verse 4. Give to the godly man, the man that's keeping the commandments, and help not a sinner. Sinner is one that's breaking God's commandments. So, we can see some people that are homeless. We go preach the word. Come keep God's commandments, and then we'll help you. Well, if you're out there homeless, you're out there a drug addict, you're out there and you're breaking God's laws, so we're not going to help you. But, again, America says, you see uh, somebody begging for money, give them money. What are they using that money for? Is it to do good or to do more wickedness and evil? Tell me what you want to happen here in Las Vegas. Um, I'm, I'm going to get, again, scripture. Uh, Judith 8 and verse six, 24. This is Judith 8 and 24. Now, therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend on us, and the sanctuary and the house and the altar rest upon us. So our mission is to help wake up our people to the knowledge of who they are, that they are the Israelites, that they are the greatest people that God has created. That's what God said, to let them know that. So through imagery, our people are not used to seeing so-called black and Hispanic men and Native American men in the order. That's the first thing. So when they see us on the streets, we're in order, it's they're astonished by that because they're not used to seeing that. So imagery is everything. So we set the right example. By what? Being husbands, fathers, brothers to our, our sisters and our other brothers. Um, being fathers to those new brothers, young brothers especially, that don't have fathers. That's our mission, and to build this and grow it, to be a light in a dark place. What do people come to Las Vegas to do? To break God's laws. To sin. We go out in the street and we teach against that to get them out of that darkness and bring them to the knowledge of the truth in the Bible. Where have you tried to spread the message in Las Vegas? And like uh, how often? Uh, we have regular what's called flyer missions. We go into the communities, we hand out flyers, we teach our people who they are. Uh, we regularly teach every Friday night on the Las Vegas Strip. Um, in fact, this weekend, we're going to a powwow to, teach, to try to teach our people, the so-called Native Americans, in the reservations, that they are the Israelites. That's our, that's our mission. We teach regularly. Uh, we are, we have YouTube videos. We have radio shows now. We're spreading. The, the gospel is spreading. And through the power of the Most High Christ, this cannot be stopped. So we're looking for to grow more. This is school. is just a beginning in Vegas. You said the official brand opening was last, last week. week. Yes. And so far you already have 35? 35. 35 and growing. We have phone calls, we get phone calls weekly of people that want to come and join. Do they have to pay anything? No, 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 no. <laughs> All right. Um, what we require is repentance from our people. That's what we require. We don't want their money. Now, when you come in, of course, it's free will offerings, but we don't put a certain amount on our people. Most of our people are poor. So we're not like the like a lot of the churches. The demand of your money, free will offer, give freely as you receive. But we preach the gospel for free. We don't ask for money. You never see us on the strip teaching with bucket waiting for money. Never. We give it freely. The word is given freely to our people. But no, you do not have to pay to come and join. Did you um, try to contact the poverty law center and say? take us off this list and we don't think this is right? No. No, we don't do that. I, I'll tell you why. Um, Poverty Law Center is run by so-called blacks, right? Right? Matthew 24 and verse 9. It says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. We understand that. Now, this is concerning our, that's from the other nations. This is concerning our people. And then shall many be offended. So they're offended by our, our gospel, which is the Bible. And shall betray one another and shall hate one another. So we expect it. 
either they repent or they're going to suffer when Christ returns. What do you think of white supremacists? Um, all right. We understand that it exists. We don't worry about it because we keep God's commandments. And we understand that if we keep God's commandments, he will protect us and fight for us. Sirach 428. So we don't worry about the Illuminati, the white supremacists, all these other organizations. Sirach 428. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. So we understand as long as we keep in God's commandments, he's going to protect us and fight for us. Does that mean some of us won't be killed? No. But we have a surety and trust in the Most High that through His Word we're going to get the kingdom. So we don't worry about those groups. When I was doing some research, the comparison came up that you're similar to white supremacists just on the different. Explain to me how how we're similar. White supremacists are saying they're chosen, they're better. They're saying, in a way, you're chosen, mm -hmm. and eventually whoever isn't part of the 12 tribes will be your slaves. Okay. Here's the difference. Have we ever hung anybody on the truth? Have we? Never. So. Never. Have we ever dragged anybody by a truck on a chain that happened to James Bird and another um, black, so called black person recently? Have we ever done that? I don't think it, I think it means more the message is what they're okay. referring to. All right, so let's look at the Bible. Uh, Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. It says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Bible is written to the Israelites only. So they claim, they try to claim this, they can't, because they're not the Israelites. They're not God's chosen people. So the message we send is what God says to our people. We are not a hate group. We put, we tell uh, our brothers and sisters to obey the laws of the land. You don't see us doing violence to other nations. Never see us do that, not IOIC. That is condemned, because where the Bible says to obey those that have rule over Obey the powers that God ordained to put over us. So we obey the, the laws of the land. So when we go out on the strip, and we um, talk to the police a lot there on the strip, and so you realize that we're helping you. We're helping you because what we teach you against drunkenness, boredom, breaking your laws, which is God's laws. So when we go out, we teach our people to be to not only to keep God's laws, but keep the laws of the land as long as it don't conflict with God's laws. Are uh, people who are not part of the 12 tribes allowed to be part of this? No, this is only for the 12 tribes, and that's determined by your father. There's no such thing as mixed, according to the Bible. We did Numbers 1 and 18. It says, And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees, their lineage, after their families, by the house do that you're mixed, biracial. That's not what the Bible says. Your race is determined by your father, who the father is. Now, anything? Um, it sounds like you're uh, targeting people who have been uh, oppressed. Um, you know, you mentioned the uh, Hispanic people. Yes. Uh, African American people yes. and whatnot. Um, is that what the Bible teaches? Absolutely. Uh, let me give Luke. Four and hold on. The fourth chapter and the eighteenth verse. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Poor, not only financially, but poor in spirit. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Who is the brokenhearted? Our people. They're brokenhearted. Look at our neighborhoods. Look at the condition of our neighborhoods and our people. They're the ones that are broken hearted, not knowing who they are, not understanding who their God is, that they're the people of the Bible. They're broken hearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. Who are the captives? That's our people. We're in America as captives. 
We didn't come here freely. We were taken over here. So we are the captives, a recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So yes, the Bible commands us to go to our people that are brokenhearted, they're poor, they're the captives. That's what we do, as commanded by the Lord. But Christ said something uh, like, uh, you know, he died for our sin. Uh, to get rid of uh, uh, the old te the old ways, which is the Old Testament. Mm. Uh, you know, they had so many wives, but, you know. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, and also, it, it said, um, uh, you know, to go out and teach the Jews and Gentiles, right? Okay. So, I got you. I got you. You got, is that, you got, that's that? That's it. Okay. Is, 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 is right. it say save the Gentiles, too? Okay. Um, how much time do we have? Because oh, not much, but I'm just okay, saying, like, all right. Let's address uh, who Christ came to first. Let's address that first. Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, let's talk about Mary, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Who's Christ's people? Who's his people? Jews. Hmm? Jews. Israelites. The Israelites. Well, he was Jewish, okay. He was not a Jewish. He was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Let's prove that. Judah, Jewish. No. Jew. Jew. Jew is short for Judah. This means to pertain or be like, but not the exact. That's why this, the people over in Israel said they're Israelis or Jewish. They're not the real Jews. We are the real Jews. All right, according to the Bible, uh, Matthew 15 and verse 24. This is this is throughout the scriptures, and this is what the churches are not teaching. Uh, Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Christ is only sent to the Israelites. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, the part about um, going teaching all nations, is that what is that what one of your mm -hmm. questions? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to, let's get the scripture. Matthew 28 and 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So people look at this and see, see, it says all nations. But the Bible has to be read precept upon precept. You cannot take one scripture and get an understanding of the scripture. So what does it mean by all nations? Let's go to Deuteronomy, fourth chapter, and the 27th verse. And the Lord shall scatter you, he's talking about the Israelites, among the nations. And ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. So Christ was telling the disciples, go and teach your people that are among the nations. He didn't say teach all nations, our people that are among the nations. Uh, more, James. James 1 and 1. That's why it's so important for us to read the Bible correctly. It says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Again, the gospel is to our people, the Israelites, that have been scattered throughout the globe. Our people, we have Israelites in Germany, Israelites in Holland, the UK, in Australia, South Korea. Our people are scattered throughout all nations. Our leadership just left Ghana. We have Israelites in Africa. Because there's a remnant of our people that's, that's still left in Africa. So our, our mission is to teach the gospel to our people that's scattered throughout all nations. Did I answer your question? What's for us? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, do you, does the church teach you here like, if you should vote or not? No, we don't vote. Um, hold on, let me let me get the the law. Uh, Deuteronomy seventeen and verse fourteen. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me, that thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren, thou shalt set king over thee, thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. 
So we are against voting. It has done nothing for our people. It has destroyed our people. Why? Uh, lamentations. Four. So we're supposed to set somebody of our nation over us, not of the other nations. Lamentations 417. As for us, our eyes as yet fail for our vain help. What do our people do? They go and vote for, uh, what's the Bernie Sanders? He's not going to help our people. Uh, Hillary Clinton, she's not going to help our people. How do you know that? It's, or, it's been proven. They don't, they don't care about our people. Their policies are put in place to destroy our people. Here's an example. Welfare. What's the requirement for a woman to get welfare? That's supposed to be a benefit and help us, right? The man cannot be in the home. So what does it do? It divides us. It separates the man from his family. So therefore, the man has not cannot take his rightful place and responsibility to take care of his family. That is required. But when you vote, you can make that judicial office and try to make a change. Okay, I understand. This system is wicked. We understand that. This system does not obey God's laws. We understand that. Uh, let me get Psalms 28. Uh, and Paul, again, politics has done nothing for it. Um, Pro, uh, Psalms 28 and 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. He's our protection. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped by the Lord. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. Jeremiah 17 and verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. Our people have been doing this since, the, since we've ever been here putting our trust in what? A man that has not our best interest in hand. And where's it done it for us? Destroyed us. When are we going to learn that the only salvation we have is from keeping God's commandments and the faith of Christ? That's it. Not through politics. politics. Politics has destroyed us. Republican and Democrat is two sides of the same coin. It makes no difference. They're not here to help us. They're here to destroy us. And we understand that through the scriptures. Have anything? That's, that's, that's really good. Anything you want to add? Um, yes, we our address um, is 1940 East Sahara Avenue, Suite C, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89104. Our phone number is 702-546-8474. And feel free to call us. Um, we'll give you the knowledge. We'll explain the scriptures to you. But this mission is to revive our nation, to bring them back to God's laws in the faith of Christ. And we appreciate you conducting this interview. Uh, give us a call. We appreciate it. Tell your colleagues. Give us more airtime so we can help our people. And that's all I have. I appreciate it. How are you guys uh, funded? Say again? How are you guys funded? For, oh, through our own uh, money. Okay. Yeah, we support each other as a nation. We don't look for outside funds. We support each other through our arms, which is free will offerings. We have businesses. This is another thing we do for at Israel United in Christ. We teach our people how to build their own business so what we can be self-sufficient and not rely on people that hate us. You understand why your message is controversial, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, because it goes against the norm of what we've been taught. We've been taught the education system uh, in the churches that we should all gather together as one. Well, we try to do that. Do you realize that slavery ended in 1960s, in the 1960s? So we're only, what, 40, 50 years removed from slavery? This country is not here to help us. It's not here to, to lift us up. It's here to destroy us. We understand that. And we understand that we get a lot of hatred for that. But Christ said we, it will happen. We stand for these laws. We stand for the Most High in Christ, what they told us, not what man tells us. So we understand the hatred, and we're fine with that.
I think now moving forward, others have a message of love everyone, treat everyone the same way. Okay. Um, don't get me wrong. We we love ourselves first. We're the ones that are downtrodden. We're the ones that need to be lifted up. So we love each other first. But the scripture, do you ever see our organization terrorizing other nations? No, you won't see it. All right? Um, that's not what Christ did. We follow Christ's footsteps. This is Romans. The message can't create feeling of resentment. We, we understand that. The Bible has warned us about that, and we understand that the hatred will come, not only from the other nations, but from our own people. We understand that. But we're going to do what God says. Romans 12 and 18. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. That's what we do. We go into the stores. We, we show respect. We're cordial. That's what you see from the, from IUIC. You don't see us uh, fighting the other nations, arguing with the other. We don't see that. For example, you you came. How did I treat you? With respect. With respect. That's what the Most High and Christ expects from us. Right, but according to you, I'm not a member of the twelve tribes. According so to God, how do you see me? According to God. You're not the member. Not to us. Remember, we don't speak our own words. If you notice... But you believe in that. Absolutely. So how do you see me? I, I see you as an, another uh, nation and understanding that in keeping God's commandments that he will deliver the Israelites out of America and out of the hell that we're in right now. But I don't walk around um, despising you. I won't let you in the door if I did. But what will happen to me, according to your message? Uh, not my message. According the message to the you Bible. In. According to the Bible. Okay, because we teach God's word. Um, we already read it, Isaiah 14, where the other nations are going to be our slaves in the kingdom. So I will be your slave. Yes, according to the Bible. Not my words. Not my emotions. Not my feelings. That's what God says. So He said it. We believe it. He said we won't go into slavery for disobeying his laws. Did it happen? Absolutely. He said all these curses will come upon you if you disobey my word. Did that happen? Yes. So, hold on a minute. Proverbs 30 and verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. So we trust every word of God. We Understand it. It's pure. It's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. He said it. We believe it. Anything you want to add? Oh, that, that was it. Again, appreciate you taking the time to do this interview. Um, we're going to continue to grow, spread this gospel to our people, to raise up our nation. So when Christ returns, we can be ruling under him. He's our king. Now, um, do you have videos that we can use especially from in here or just like where can we get YouTube videos and stuff or is there an opportunity in the next few days where maybe he can come back and shoot video of you in here? I don't know yeah. if you allow that during the ceremony. Um, let me get clearance from that or you know have come back and, and videotape us but we have hundreds if not thousands of YouTube videos um, just type in IUIC and we have many many channels of our videos. And we can use those? Absolutely. And um, so nobody would get upset about rights, like they're, you're, you're it's out on the okay. internet, okay. right? Okay. Uh, we have also, we have a website, IsraelUnite.org, and you can go in there, look up more information about our organization, how it started, our leadership. Uh, we have great wise men that are over our congregation, and we follow them as they follow Christ. So as long as they're following Christ's footsteps, we follow them. And the Lord has blessed us by keeping his commandments, staying in order, and being disciplined, which is our people lack today. They have no discipline. They have no morality. God's commandments gives us the discipline that we need. What if someone who 
who is part of the 12 tribe mm -hmm. is offended, saying, I do have discipline and I am doing the right thing here. And um, what, what do you mean? Because they have to be keeping God's commandments in order to be disciplined. If, uh, we have a lot of our people that know they're Israelites, but refuse to keep God's commandments. That's what's going to happen to them. They're going to be destroyed when Christ returns. What does that mean on a day-to-day -day basis, keeping the commandments? Yes, not, not directly, but just, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, what does that mean? Okay, here is an example. Um, the one we read in Leviticus 1917, loving our brother as ourselves. So if I see my brother, whether it is my son, my daughter, my other brother, my wife, if I see them in sin, I'll correct them. That's brotherly love. Uh, is this uh, no alcohol? Or? No, we, we don't drink to drunkenness. Okay. okay we do drink wine. Uh, we do drink strong drink, but not to drunkenness. Drunkenness is a sin. It's absolutely not allowed in our position. Cigarettes? Absolutely not. Um... What else? Marijuana? Yeah. Absolutely not. Medical marijuana? Absolutely not. But it's Solomon. First, I'm going to get First Corinthians. First Corinthians 3. Absolutely not. First Corinthians 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So we absolutely are against marijuana, any drug of any kind that alters, that does not keep you sober. We have to be sober. Premarital sex. We push marriages. We push ma Here's an example. If a man lays down with a sister, brother lays down with a sister, he has to marry her. Otherwise, he's kicked out. But that's whoredom. He's kicked out of He's, the church. Absolutely. He has to marry that woman. We do not push whoredom. That is whoredom. We read in Hebrews 13 and 4 that marriage is honorable, not whoredom. What if he is remorseful and wants to repent? As long as he gets his marriage certificate and marry that woman, he can come back. Even if they get pregnant? He has to marry that woman according to the law. And we push that. We do not allow men to come into the organization and treat our sisters like whores. You lay down with her, you better get a marriage to get marry that woman. Otherwise, otherwise you're out. We do not tolerate that. Again, by us pushing marriages according to the scriptures, this does not help our people. Does that get rid of single parent families? Because what is unrighteous men want to do is lay down with a sister and leave her. Now she's left with what? A child. Who's going to take care of that child? She has to take care of it by, by herself. We do not advocate that at all. Marriages. 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 Not jump-offs. Not one-night stands. Not girlfriend, boyfriend. All of that is horrible. We push marriages and with marriages you build families and with families you build a nation of people. Uh, just off camera, what is the reaction from the African American community uh, toward your uh, congregation? Um, I, I, it's not just for African Americans. It's for so-called Hispanics, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, uh, Native Americans as well. Uh, most reject because we understand that our people are destroyed. We understand that. Most of our people will reject this. We also understand that. We accept it. We pray that they repent, but we understand that most of our people will not repent and keep these commandments and the faith of Christ. We understand that, so we don't get um, we don't get too excited when people come in, and we don't get depressed when people leave. It's a revolving door. We understand that. That's what the Bible says. So yes, most of our people will be offended, especially coming from the Christian church. Because this is not what the message that the church is teaching. Number one, Christ, Jesus Christ. What image is portrayed in a Christian church of Jesus the Christ? Well, I mean, that's you can blame it on uh, uh, Michelangelo and uh, whatnot. You know, because 
He was white. Yeah. But, but then again, it doesn't describe Jesus. I mean, the Bible didn't does not describe Jesus Christ like the way the uh, the painting does. Absolutely not. You're you're absolutely correct. The Bible describes what Christ looked like. Right. Let's let's get it. Revelation one and fourteen. And we'll show the importance of this. Revelation one fourteen. It's all about Christ. His head and his hairs were white like wool. He had white woolly hair. What nation of people have woolly hair? We do. That's not the image that's portrayed in the church. And it says, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Why? Because Christ drank wine. He was not a drunkard, but he drank wine. And his feet, like unto fine brass. So you have um, shoes where I can see your feet, right? So the color of your feet, are they pretty much the color of your legs, mm -hmm. your torso, mm -hmm. your face? Mm -hmm. So John the Revelator said, and his feet like unto fine brass. What color is fine brass? Dark brown. So it's already dark brown. As if they burn in a furnace. So you take that dark brown brass, mm -hmm. you burn in the furnace and take it out, what color is going to come out? Even darker. Than the brown. So Christ was a so called black man that looks like us. Now, if our, especially our younger generation, grew up knowing that they look like Christ. So when I see another one of my people, who do I see? I don't see a nigger. I don't see a stick, a wetback. I see Christ. And because of the imagery that has been taken from us, and we, we've been told to worship an image that doesn't look like anything like us. So when, that's why our people, when so-called white person or Edomite does something against us, you know what in their mind they're saying? Why did Jesus do this to me? That's why our people think in their mind. In South Carolina, black, all black church, this Edomite boy walked in a church and was allowed to sit down in the church for over an hour and shot up the church. Because what they saw, they saw Jesus coming into the church. Why would the security question that man, that young man, and say, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. But because of the philosophy and the doctrine of America, our people see a white man, they see Christ. Wherefore, if they saw they knew the truth, what Christ looked like them, they would be on guard. Him, you can't come in. We need to check you. Come in and kill up nine people in the church. That's a sickness of our people. That we love other nations more than we, did, we love ourselves. Otherwise, that would never happen. We have security here. Oh, during your service? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why? Because we understand we're living in dangerous times. We understand that. We're not fooled by the American philosophy that we love everybody. No. We understand who our enemies are through the Bible. That's the wisdom that we have through the Bible. And the enemies are? The enemies are the other nations. That's who the enemy is. So we understand that um, when we deal with other nations, we understand where our place is and where they are. So we're not fooled by the sweet talk of politicians. They're liars. We're not fooled by our so-called leaders. Because why? They're in agreement with the heathen. We understand that. Look at the scripture. Um, Isaiah 28 and 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. So these so-called leaders, uh, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, T.D. Snakes, a prayerful dollar, they are scornful men. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. The death that they made a covenant with is agreeing to the philosophies and the policies of America. That's the death. And with hell are we at agreement. So our leaders, so-called leaders, are in agreement with what the hell we're in. They're not here to save us. According to the scriptures, we understand that that they're our enemy as well. Because what? Are they preaching the gospel to our people? Are they telling our people that we are the Israelites? 
that we have to keep God's commandments, they are not doing that at all. They're going to preach what? Love everybody. The Rainbow Coalition. That's not according to the Bible. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says to separate yourselves. That's what the Bible says, and we do that. Um, two questions for me. Um, you say the other nation. Where did the other nation came from? Uh, according to the Bible. Okay. All right. Remember, we read in Deuteronomy that God only chose the Israelites to be a chosen people. I understand that, but where did the other nation came from? If I don't say I don't say we don't understand your question. I mean, okay, you're saying you're the chosen one. You're the Israelites, and then where did the other nation came from? Oh, the, 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 the other nation that cannot belong to your church. The nine twelve tribes. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, the twelve tribes of Israel are only the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as described in the Bible and with archaeology and history, proves that point. So we understand that God only. Hold on a minute. Give me Deuteronomy four and forty-four. It says, and this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. So the law and command was only given to the Israelites. The word of God was only given to the Israelites. It wasn't given to all nations. So what? So we be set apart from all other people. All right? Nehemiah uh, 5 and 9. Also I said, it is not good that you do... Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our Lord because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? So our forefathers understood that the other nations were our enemies, that they were not part of the 12 tribes of Israel. Did I answer your question? Uh, if God created the 12 tribes, who created the other nation? That's he, my question. He created the other nations as well. And then why is he hating the other nation okay. and favoring just the 12 nations? I, uh, I got you. I got you. Let's go to Second Ezra 6. And 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. So all people come from Adam. This is, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. So God made a distinction from the other nations and the Israelites who he chose. Because he only chose the Israelites. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. The whole earth was made for the Israelites. And we are, right now, part of our uh, oppression is understanding that we were meant to rule the world, but we're enslaved. We're on the bottom. Verse 56, As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. So God said that the other nations are nothing. Thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle. What is spittle? Spit. This is what God says. It's not what we say. This is what God says. And liken, has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. So you have a bottle of water, and a drop falls from the bottle. Are you concerned about that drop of water? No. The same with the Lord. He's only concerned with the 12 tribes of Israel. In his eyes, other nations are nothing. That's what the Bible says. But why isn't this being taught in church? This is the first time you're hearing this, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Because, uh, again, the pastors are ravening wolves set there to destroy our people. They're not there to edify people, bring our people to the knowledge of who they are, and to keep the commandments. So we understand that. But this is what God says. Again, he said it, we believe it. Any other questions? Nope. Oh, this might take the whole day, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, go, no, go ahead. We got time. No, we got deadlines. <laughs> I, I understand. I understand. So, um, let me ask you, brother. Mm -hmm. What is your nationality? I'm Ethiopian. What's that? Ethiopian. Okay. East Africa. Okay. So we have a remnant of our people in Africa as well. Mm -hmm. A remnant, small remnant. So our people are scattered throughout all nations across the world. All right. Um, I'm, I'm good. You good? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so 
We had other uh, organizations use our videos for evil. Tell the truth. That's all we ask. How did they use it for evil? Huh. Um, there was an expose of a using Israelite from a different organization. Mm -hmm. And they, this man murdered a child, murdered his mother. Right? What do they put in the beginning? I, I don't know what they call it in, in media, but they put it in the beginning shots of the video. They put videos as shots of our teachers. So what does that do to the viewer when they see us in the street? Oh, that organization kills babies, kills a mother. We have nothing to do with that at all. Well, where was the connection at all? There's no connection. That's the point. What was the story on? The story was on Israelite which he was, yeah. um, killing his, killing the baby of the mother's child and killing the mother. We do not advocate that at all. Is but they, even affiliated with you? No, no, not at all. It's from a completely different organization. Never been with us. But you see that on the video. That's why imagery is so important. Yeah. You see the imagery, you watch it, and somebody that doesn't know about IUIC, they see the imagery and they see purple and gold. When they see us in the street, what are they going to think? We are the same people that this man is affiliated with. No, we're not. No, we condemn that. This was that. like a news story or yes, a documentary? It was a, it was a documentary on the ID channel, I think it was. Oh. Yes, exactly. So now, that is an example of using our videos unjustly. Painting us as murderers, painting us as a hate group, painting us as these wild animals that's out in the street cursing out people. That's not us. Did you did you guys call them and say what happened? They're, they're going to do what they want, they want to do. And we understand that. Again, we understand that because of this truth of the Bible that we'll be hated. We understand that. But yes, that is a kind of deception and the evil that we deal with as an organization. Because we push, what do we push? God's commandments. That's what we push, and we get hatred for that, for pushing his commandments. We push his commandments, crime in our neighborhoods will go down today. Just by applying loving that neighbor as ourselves. Crime will be eliminated right now. Besides the strip, where else are you around town? Oh, we're, um, again, in the neighborhoods, in the yeah. communities, the streets. All over. We just left, um, you know, are you familiar with the Terra Dome? The Terra Yeah, that's, that's how bad the neighborhood is. Yeah. Yes, we go into the worst neighborhoods to teach our people about who they are and how to repent and keep God's commandments. So we're not in the suburbs. We go where our people are. Right? Do we get hatred? Of course. But we don't fear that. We go out and do what God told us to do. But yes, we are in the communities, in the black and Hispanic communities. We have greater fire missions. We're going to expand that. Our Lord's will, we're going to expand it again. Going to powwows, going to events that our people are at to wake them up. Do you have video visiting neighborhoods in Las Vegas? Yes, we do. You do? Yes, we do. So yeah, I What's that? Is that on YouTube? No, it's not on YouTube. Oh. How can we get those? Uh, I'll get the clearance of okay. the uh, Again, tell the truth. If you get the video, tell the truth. Do not paint us as these crazy Negroes that's on the street corner cursing out for us. That's not us. Well, people are going to, I mean, people are going to have a hard time accepting that when you're telling them, you know, when you ask them for separation. That's what the Bible says. I understand what the Bible says, but yeah. whether I agree with you yeah. or not, mm -hmm. I'm gonna it's just, be fair. That's all we ask. Yeah. Just so. again, just tell the truth. We're not a hate group. Uh, if you sisters, we have ex gang members, ex gang members, drug dealers that have been informed through keeping God's commandments. That's a good thing. So how is that hatred? When we take the worst of our people 
And through them repenting and keeping God's commandments, they're completely reformed and changed. Do you do any um, outreach in prisons? We will start that. We have other cities that are already doing that. We're going to start that in Las Vegas to reach out. We will get that. We will get that to reach out our people in, in prisons because they, they need it. Yeah. Oh. Yes, yes, that's why, why uh, purple. It represents royalty. It represents royalty. Christ had a purple gold uh, garment on, didn't he? What? Yes, he had a purple garment, according to Daniel. Okay. okay. <laughs> so it represents royalty. So where is this video going that you've been shooting? Behind the scene. Uh, the reason why we have. Uh, him here is because um, we were interviewed by another organization and they wrote an article in the paper and was completely false. Everything they said about organizations was completely false. Everything they said that happened during the interview was completely false. So we had our own camera there and to show on YouTube this is exactly what happened. There was no editing. This is it. This is the interview in its entirety. And you be the judge. Found the Vice article. Yes. Yes. Was that, yeah, I read that article. It's very uh, opinionated. Was that? He put his own uh, little Absolutely. opinion. Absolutely. Um, did, did, is that? Yeah, what, our job is not supposed. We're not supposed to be putting our, our own opinion. It, it's that's more real of, journalism, yeah, isn't it? That's that's what we do. Services is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. sure. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates from all our YouTube channels. Shalom.